Okay, I've added, I'm on a different channel. I don't see the chat anymore. Okay. Well, you're you're on a different live stream. I know that's what okay. I mean. So okay. you're gonna tell people to switch over. Hi, Ducky. Thanks for joining me. Sorry we messed up the other stream. Hey, AJ. Hopefully this one will work. Did you guys notice like 20 minutes ago, right before I was starting, that the internet or the YouTube pretty much wouldn't launch at all? So I'm not sure if that had anything to do. It could entirely just be me not you know, dealing with my own technology. So I apologize. I'm going to wait a little bit for people to jump over. We started early to you know, make sure we were okay. And then right in the middle of testing the microphone, it started buffering and I couldn't figure out how to get out of it. And then once I got out of it, it was in a new stream. So hopefully we'll catch some of the people. Uh, Amelia is trying to lop, hop onto the other one to let people know that I switched over. Um, oh, hey, Katie, Vintage and Vinyl's here. Um, oh, Katie said she was having uh, internet inter issues too. I actually got a, a text, an Insta Instagram note from Michael earlier, uh, like 6.30 saying, uh, hey, just so you know, YouTube seems to be crashing. I'm like, wait, no. So I don't, it was fine right before we started, but they might be kind of in a glitch, whatever, like recovery mode. Um, but you know what? It's, we're all good. We're here, we're having fun. Uh, we got Nathaniel came back, awesome. So it's not uh, two o'clock in the morning for him. So we were glad we established that. Uh, AJ's retro, vi retro vintage is on here. Oh, Corey, thrifted artist, hey Corey. Uh, Reclaim Treasures by Mary, which I will talk about this later, but I think I saw. Yeah, Reclaim Treasures by Mary is having her own sale. Is that your first sale? Um, that's going to be Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, will be uh, Reclaim Treasures by Mary is having, uh, I believe, her first sale. So uh, uh, in his, in a, in a grant, Instagram a follower made this lovely little calendar that we can all keep track of. So I'll make sure as we get more people uh, that carry over, I'll go through that for everybody because it's a really nice summary. And like he said, we're getting to a point where there's so many live sales, it's hard to keep track. And trust me, I, I'm in there with you. I love watching the other sales. And I missed, George went live last night. I missed his. It wasn't a sale, but it was a premiere. And I, I love when he does his premiere videos, George at the Antique Nomad because you can chat during a premiere and some people were on my premiere on Tuesday and it's just kind of a different experience where like I'm not when I'm doing this I can't really and once we get started I'm not going to have as much time to interact so with the premiere you can you know sit there and type but I missed that because I didn't even know what was happening I was able to catch Stephanie's sale last night from uh, Thrifting Adventures I actually picked something up from her sale last night so she'll be having another one on Monday the 18th and Misty does hers on Wednesday. Um, uh, Alex from Chapter Two Vintage, she does hers every other Friday. So now, not only do I have to remember her show, her sales are on a Friday that they're every other Friday. So Alex has a sale uh, from Chapter Two Vintage. She will be this Friday, so tomorrow at one p.m. Eastern. And uh, Vinny is going to have one on um, Saturday. Let's see, does we have a time for Vinny's Saturday? Okay, we've got Saturday. Echo. <laughs> there. Oh, All right. Um, so let's see. Vinny's is set at 5 p.m. Eastern. I don't know if Vinny is on here. Um, Real Nifty Vintage is on here. Hi, Jeffrey. Um, I've purposely set this up so you can't see the shrine that I have built to you. Um, but you may or may not know, but basically everything, if you've ever watched one of my videos, you come up a lot because everything I've learned, I give credit to you. So I'm absolutely thrilled that you're on here. I hope uh, maybe Aaron is there. Maybe Stella is in, like nearby and give her a pet on the head for me. Um, so, and Jeffrey has a sale. He is also having a sale tomorrow night. His is... The little calendar that Michael made says 7 p.m. Eastern, but Jeffrey's in Illinois with me. So Jeffrey, can you clarify, are you at seven o'clock Eastern or seven o'clock Central? Uh, I have a feeling you're seven o'clock Central, not because it's seven o'clock Eastern would be six o'clock 
Chicago time. So I have a feeling Jeffrey might be seven o'clock uh, central. Uh, but anyway, so that Alex has a sale at one Eastern tomorrow. Jeffrey's is at seven, either central or Eastern. Uh, thrifting, uh, no, that, that was wrong. Reclaim Treasures is one o'clock Eastern on Saturday. Vi Vintage Vinny is five o'clock Eastern on Saturday. And another new name on here, I think is her first sale, A Vision and Vintage is doing 1 p.m. on uh, Sunday, uh, 1 p.m. Eastern. I can't remember where she's based. I want to say Michigan, but I could be making that up. Um, Stella's here. Uh, Jeffrey says Stella is here and Aaron is out in the yard. Okay. Well, he's, uh, wait, Illinois is still on a stay at home order. He should still be in the house. No, just kidding. Um, and then shifting, wrapping the calendar week around, uh, Misty, Thrifty Junker Vintage Hunter, and she is on here. Hi, Misty. She does her sales on Wednesdays. So she is 1 p.m. Eastern on Wednesdays. And then she does a sale after the YouTube sale. She actually does one on Instagram, which is kind of like whenever the YouTube one ends, she'll start the one on Instagram. So she's, she's in my opinion, she's kind of the, the one who's the maverick, who's blazing the trail because she started doing them, you know, kind of picked the day, figuring out which was the best way to do it. She's now gotten into the rhythm. She does them every Wednesday. Uh, they've become super popular. And I tried to get that little candy uh, scoop that you had from your preview. And I was the second person to get my bid in. So I missed it. Um, but she's been so great helping all of us who are starting up for the first time doing our sales. She's answering all the questions. So it is fantastic uh, that she is doing that. So we've got, it's uh, 7-Eleven. So I think we've got 35 people. Uh, hopefully everyone's switched over. I'm going to go ahead and get things started. And uh, welcome again. Uh, so my name is Patrick. I don't think I've said that yet. So I'm Patrick with Trusty Huckster Mercantile. If you're joining me with a little bit of technical difficulty, yet again, we are here for a live sale. And so the way I'm going to do it this week is very similar uh, to the way I did last week and the way most sales are running right now for these uh, live sales on vintage, uh, for vintage stuff. I am going to show you an item. I will describe it. I will tell you the price. I will then give you a number. When I give you the number, if you are interested in that item, you need to claim it by typing that number into the live chat. So the first person we see is the one who gets the item. So please keep in mind, internet speeds vary. It might behoove you to actually refresh your internet or refresh the stream every once in a while. What I typically do is if something comes up for sale that I don't want, that's when I refresh it because I don't care if I miss that one. You don't know it's buffering, and but pay attention. You will know if suddenly I'm talking about my Diet Dr. Pepper and I've yet to say a number and you see people are starting to throw in a number for it, it means their stream is ahead of yours. So just be aware of that. Please don't get upset. It's nobody's fault. And there's really, unfortunately, nothing I can do to control it. So just be aware. Internet speeds definitely have a dictation. But the only way Amelia and I can keep track of this is to just go off of who the first person is that we see on our side. So what, she'll, what she's been doing last, what she did last week, she'll do again this week, is she will let you know who claims it. And that claim is based on who was the first person that popped into our chat. So just keep that in mind. Do not give her a hard time. Um, the, you know, we need to keep, everyone needs to stay pleasant and uh, we're going to go get started. Um, so again, when you see the number or hear the number, that's when you can go ahead and claim it. Please take into consideration if you're bidding throughout the evening, what your total will end up being. This is a, a branded as a side business for me, but this is a revenue stream for me. And if you claim something and then you can't fulfill it or you need to cancel it later because it was too much, it means somebody else didn't get to take advantage of it. And, you know, things happen. Life gets in the way, you know, funds, you know, you got to get your car worked on, things happen. But just be sensitive to that. We want you to participate. I, I think it's fun when I win something. I bought something I totally didn't need from Thrift Thrifting Adventures last night, but um, it was fun. You know, so I hope you enjoy it. But just keep that in mind because there are items that this is one that technically was not in the sale last week. Uh, it was on one of my video sales and she claimed it and then she had to cancel it. So it's fine, but I'd already taken it off the sale list. So instead of trying to put it back into that, I'm just going to go ahead and, and sell it here. This is a Daher tin. We talked about this on Misty's channel yesterday. A Daher, uh, it's stamped on the back. Daher ceased 
as of that name in 1982 and became the Tin Container Company. So anything with the Daher name is by definition uh, prior to 1982. This is an awesome uh, Santa Claus uh, lidded container. It's got the gold gold wash finish on the inside. It's very clean, tiny bit of tiny bit of discoloration, but you know oxidation, but not not bad. The lid's very clean. The graphics are super clean all the way around. And because this technically wasn't supposed to be part of this sale, I'm just going to use the discount price I had for the video. This is two dollars and fifty cents. If you haven't watched my other sale videos, there's a series of tables. And the more you bought, the cheaper you got. So this is the cheapest price. So two dollars and fifty cents was if you bought four or more. So this the Christmas tin is two dollars and fifty cents, and it is number sixty-five. So if you're interested in the Christmas tin, claim number sixty-five, and you will get that for two dollars and fifty cents. If you uh, it looks like Misty got the uh, Christmas tin, not surprised. Got a Santa on it, and uh, Misty has a thing for Santa. Have to talk to her husband about that. Um, next item, if you follow me on Instagram or any of the things, or if you, if you follow my Etsy store, you will know I have a soft spot for these chop plates. They're very large. They are definitely of a specific era, you know, basically 70s, 80s. So my childhood, I just really like the looks of them. They're very, they're solid. They're stoneware. This one happens to be yamaka stoneware y-a-m-a-k-a -A -A, admittedly not one that i'm familiar with it's from the it's the flower hill pattern it is marked japan but just based on the overall look this is definitely something i could see like right around that late 70s 80s you know aesthetic um i've got tons of these I would lo i'd love to have a collection but i have a feeling if i stack these in my kitchen cabinets the cabinets will fly off the wall because these 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 weigh a lot so this one is the yamaka flower hill chop plate it is four dollars and it is number 70. so if you're interested in the yamaka yama what did i just say yama ka uh chop plate you can have it number 70 for four dollars all right got a big boy coming up here I am, since I do this on the side, I don't always have the best um, source to get creative and where I'm sourcing my materials. This item, I, so I do a lot of Goodwills. When I travel for my job, I get to do Goodwills in nine different states. So I get some variety that way. But I don't tend to always have time to do garage sales, estate sales, things like that. So this was one of the first estate sales I ever did. Okay, and I'm now I'm going to drop these. Oh, look, I taped them on. I thought I had it. This came from an estate sale here in the Chicago area. It is a very large snack tray that in it has a salt and pepper shaker, which I had taped in so they wouldn't rattle around the box. They've got the little rubber stopper on the bottom of it. The piece itself is not stamped in any way. So it kind of has the feel of a DIY piece from the 80s maybe. Um, it, they did pour the glaze in the back, so it did get into all those crevices. So this is, a, it's finished completely on all sides. It's got the stilt marks on the back. So those are signs that it could, it's definitely a ceramic piece, not porcelain, and that could definitely have been a, a, at home. But the the job on the face, he's just too freaking cute. He's got the little buck teeth and the little hair thing in the front. So I picked him up. And I just, unfortunately, I just don't know anything more about him. I don't know the age. I don't know, you know, who made him, anything like that. It happened to come in this Marshall Fields Christmas box. I don't know if they ever had anything to do with each other other than maybe that's how it was gifted. I, mean, I don't know if he was bought from Marshall Fields, but there's a uh, receipt on the inside of the, of the box that says 1988. So maybe a late eighties piece. So anyway, uh, era wise, that's kind of where we're at. It's a super cute piece. Again, salt and pepper shaker, perfect condition. Side note, basically everything you're going to see is going to be perfect condition. If I, if, unless I say otherwise, I tend, if it gets a chip in it or something, I don't, I, it goes back to goodwill. So uh, everything's great condition. He is $20 and he is number 74. So $74 for the massive mouse and the little salt and pepper shakers that kind of look like cheese. So it's not a cheese plate because I don't know why you'd have salt and pepper on a cheese tray, but hey, it's a mouse. He has salt and pepper. One of our viewers thought they were cheese shakers. Cheese shakers? I've never heard of a cheese shaker. Well, no, I guess Parmesan cheese. 
They do have different holes in the top. So like maybe two different types of, oh, I like that idea. The hole in the bottom would be able to fill. You could, get, you could put cheese in there. I just, I don't know if the holes on the top are big enough for Parmesan to come out, but that at least would make some sense. But hey, you know what? It's still kind of cute. And if you've got the right decor, he would look awesome sitting out. Okay, that was, you know, big piece. Let's go to a little piece. So this is a small lacquerware bowl. It's not marked or stamped in any way, but it's got the look of, you know, kind of an East European, Poland, Russia, you know, Ukraine, that type. It's that black lacquerware, kind of the same material that the Russian lacquer boxes are made out of. Now, from what I can tell, I, I have sold and I do uh, know a little bit about the boxes. I do not see a signature on this. I don't think this is as high end as some of the boxes. It is kind of cool. It's like a paper mache. I don't know how, like, would you, would, would you put a sauce in there? I mean, it is lacquered completely, but I think it might be better for dry or it may just be a decorative piece. So it's just a really cute, it's got the, uh, a uh, strawberry pattern that's painted on the inside. The outside has the gold with the little black uh, scallop trim on the top and then the red across the bottom. And like I said, there's no stamp. It probably maybe had a paper label at some point. Um, but anyway, so it's just a really sweet piece. It is $3 and the lacquer uh, strawberry bowl is number 49. All right, so 74 was the cheese. Correct. All right, so it looks like Thrifty. Uh, yeah, Thrifter, Junker, Vintage Arts, so Misty got 74. Oh, Katie came in right behind. And then for the little lacquer bowl, it looks like Ducky Jones is making first, first purchase for me. So congratulations. Oh, one of the things I didn't talk about, but if you saw my announcement um, when I was prepping for the sale, I just crossed the at, at the sale last week, I crossed the threshold of 100 subscribers. Yay. I now have over 180 subscribers. Yay. Kermit arm flail. Uh, so very excited by that. But as part of the 100, I decided to make an announcement and I'm going to be giving away gift certificates to my Etsy store. So to celebrate 100 subscribers, I'm giving away $100 worth of gift certificates. In order to get a gift, in order to qualify to get a gift certificate, you need to place a purchase something during the sale tonight. When you purchase that, your name will go into a bowl and I will pull 10 names on camera to show who wins the, the gift certificates. What I'll do is then after you pay your bill, don't game me, after you play, pay your bill, I will send you a coupon code and it'll be worth a $10 off a purchase of $25 or more. I do apologize that I'm putting a threshold for the minimum purchase, but almost all the items in my, my Etsy store are free shipping. So if you did $10 off of something that I had at free shipping, I would it, it would cost me more money. So it's one of those cases that basically by giving you the $10 off, you're knocking whatever you're purchasing for the most part, you're knocking it down to a, a without shipping price. So I hope that that's, you know, I don't want to feel like anyone I'm trying to hurt anybody or, you know, game anybody myself, but you know, it's a gesture that I really want to do some sort of a giveaway. So for all the purchases, uh, uh, we've already got a couple of people's names in the, in the, in the bowl as you buy throughout the evening at eight o'clock, I will stop this part of the sale and give you and pick the winners. And then at eight o'clock, I'm going to do it. Trustees bargain bin comes out still working on a better name, but for now it's trustees bargain bin. Everything will be two bucks and we're going to fly through that stuff. Just trying to get to see if we can sell it. But back to this regular sale. I love these house glass dishes. I think again, because they're kind of of my era, like they were popular in the sixties and seventies they always had some like souvenir -y, you know, aspect to them. I've sold some that were from Disney World, uh, different city, different uh, types of, um, you know, landmark, things like that. This one is the Apollo 11 commemorative dish. So it's got this ruffled rim. It's black glass, but it is glass. So you can see through me, although that didn't show it, but you can see through me. It's or through it. Uh, it's got the medallion in the center of the moon landing with the planting of the flag and then little vignettes all the way around the edges in absolutely again perfect condition nothing is like the everything looks great you know there's not a, scratches or loss of paint anywhere that dish it's the Apollo 11 glass dish it's eleven dollar or five dollars five dollars I don't know where 11 came I think I saw 11 there Apollo 11 five dollars and it's number 47. The Apollo glass dish, 47 for 
All right. Before I lose him, I'm going to do a little celebratory thing. For those of you who joined my sale last week, I did kind of a celebrity sighting. And these were the celebrities that I was watching for for my first sale. Chapter two vintage, Alex, Fatbird Friends, or Fat, Fatbird Finds, Thrifter, Thrifting Adventures, and Vintage Vinny all joined my sale last week, but there were many people who did not. Real Nifty Vintage was one. He was, you know, he has a life, so he did not join me. I wept into my pillow that night. But he's here now. And what I had done was for everyone who was in the celebrity sighting, I had a special item that I'd set to the side that I pulled into the sale. So I need to pull the plate on stand. So these, this is at no point an expectation that anyone on the list will buy these items. These are literally just something that reminds me of those people. And I'm going to include a Lefton plate on stand. The reason this is a, a Jeffrey reference is again, and I'm not, I'm not kidding. When I first started getting into this, Jeffrey was the channel I binge watched on repeat. His hours of, of viewing had to have gone up immediately um, and immensely. And he talks a lot about Lefton on his channel and it's a great channel. Anyone that doesn't know Real Nifty Vintage, definitely make sure you catch his sale um, tomorrow. And um, he's just, he's fun to watch. He always, always has, um, you know, he's, he, Barb joins him sometime. So, if Barb joins me, there's an item for Barb too. She's, she's winking owl antiques. Uh, but anyway, Lefton is, I never heard the word Lefton until it left the lips of Jeffrey. So I have a Lefton piece and I am selling this Lefton piece. It is a chintz, the pink chintz pattern, a pierced plate on a pedestal. It has the original foil stamp and the stamp dates it from 1953 to 1971. So you know the era of this. It's the Japan stamp, but it's got the registered U.S. patent is on there. So the Lefton uh, chintzware pattern is $6, and that is number 64. And if you like Lefton, there's a bunch of it on uh, Jeffrey's page, and there's also a bunch of it on my page as well on my Etsy site. Jeffrey has an Etsy store, I think, but he's in the process of sh shifting over to eBay. So I'm not sure where all the Lefton would be, but um, Lefton is it's a good name to look out for. And I've kind of started focusing on those Japan labels and uh, learned a lot and learned them from Jeffrey. And so that was why I brought a piece of Lefton. That is currently for sale on my Etsy store. And trust me, it's more than $6 on Etsy. So if you, uh, I don't know if 64, so who picked that up? Look like Judy Gillespie picked that up. So congratulations, Judy. And that puts your name into the drawing. Okay, because I do like smalls every once in a while, I get self-conscious and buy something big. So this is what I think is an absolutely amazing uh, piece. It's not like super old. It's date stamped on the back of Lori Gates and it's dated 1997. She did these as a series. A lot of them were smaller bowls and plates, uh, kind of pasta bowls, salad bowls, things like that. This one is massive. I mean, like I don't even know what you would use this for. It's, I guess, a centerpiece bowl or pasta for a family of 12. It's, it's absolutely massive. Um, actually, I brought the tape measure for a specific reason. It is massive to the tune of 18 and a half inches across, and it is almost three inches tall. So it's relatively shallow from that perspective, but it's beautiful. So it's got all these herbs put along the edges, but nothing in the middle. So you can, I do feel it's a functional piece. So you would put food here because otherwise there'd be a big decorative piece in the middle too, if it was just for display. So I guess it's just a really massive salad bowl, pasta bowl, whatever the case may be. So this is the Lori Gates um, massive bowl. It is going to be put down $15. Lori Gates, $15 and it is number 48. So number 48 is $15, and that is the Lori Gates Massive Bowl. All right. Uh, another item that was in the preview, somebody had commented that they caught the glimpse of him peeking out from underneath some other pieces. This is a piece of Mariposa pewter. Look at that face. It's this snowman that has these absolutely dimensional eyes, nose, mouth, and buttons. It's got this little scarf. I do... <sighs> I'm going to assume this is an ice cream scoop. It's somewhat of an odd shaped bowl. It's fairly heavy. I would say it's definitely over a pound. It's so it's fairly heavy. It's all pewter, 
it's just the shape of the spoon, I want to say is ice cream scoop, but it's not really deep. So you wouldn't get a huge scoop of ice cream. So I don't know what it's for. I mean, it kind of fits to have a snowman serving ice cream, I guess. It's also kind of cannibalistic, but whatever. Um, anyway, it's this, I don't know the age. That's one of the reasons it never got listed onto Etsy. I couldn't find any other examples of it. So I wasn't sure if it was contemporary or if it was old enough to follow Etsy's rules of 20 years or older. But it's an absolutely perfect condition. It's got, you know, it's got a little bit of the patina just in the sense of how pewter ages. But I have a pewter collection and that's actually what I love about pewter. You don't have to polish it. It just looks better as it ages. So you got Nifty Little Snowman Man. Um, he is $8 and he's number 67. Our friend Jeffrey thinks it might be a snow cone scooper. A snow cone scooper. Well, you need bigger snow cones in Trenton, Illinois because I would want a big one. But that's, it's... Uh, it's a cool spoon regardless, and whether it's for holiday or just in general, I think it's a great addition. So 67 for $8 is the little uh, pewter scoop. All right, since we're in the kitchen, we'll stay in the kitchen with another item. This is another item that has been on my Etsy store. And sometimes with Etsy, when you're a reseller, you have to find the right keywords to try and get people to find things. So although I thought this was a super cool piece, Maybe I just didn't have the right keywords because I had a decent price and it just, it didn't go anywhere. It's a sugar shaker and you can see the top, it screws on and it's kind of like the, the seventies Tupperware type plastic. It's like a hardy, hard plastic material, but it's got the word sugar formed into the plastic, which I just think is super cool. So I, I don't a hundred percent know the era. Um, it's got, it's black glass. You're not gonna be able to tell it from here, but you can kind of see, you can kind of see through it. So it is a black glass with a splatter white glaze on it. It's, you know, now that I picked it up, I meant to look this up, but I'm sure there's enough experts on here. You're going to know it's the, the, um, stamp is the one with the A in the circle. And I can't remember if that's at ha Atlas before they became Hazel Atlas or if it was, uh, anchor hawking. So if anyone knows, you could mention what the A in a circle stands for. It's got the number 14. Um, so anyway, this is the sugar stick shaker. It is $4 and it is number two. So the sugar shaker, $4, number two. All right. Uh, somebody else I've got on the, uh, I was watching for, Monica Delgado is uh, watching tonight. Uh, so it looks like Vintage Vinny got the uh, sugar shaker. Awesome. Congratulations, Vinny. And that puts you in for my drawing as well. Jeffrey, a little bit too slow, uh, but Vinny uh, grabs that. Uh, Monica purchased from my very first sale, so I appreciated that. She also purchased from the videos uh, that I had done, which, trust me, was a rare thing. Um, so I appreciated that as well. And Monica has an affinity for pottery. So there was a piece of pottery that I had. Um, uh, this is currently listed on my Etsy shop. And this is not a pressure. Again, anything I'm bringing up because of somebody does not mean I expect you to buy it. It's again, I have so many things to put through. It's just a way to crank through the items. So this is a single candlestick holder made out of pottery. It is marked on the bottom Crozier with the number 85, which I'm assuming is the year in which it was made. It's a really nice piece, actually very well made for uh, studio pottery. It's extremely flat on the bottom. It's a really uniform circle in the middle. It's just a really nice looking piece um, that again, is on my Etsy store. So anything that gets bought, I've got to make sure I take off my Etsy store. That is uh, the Crozier pottery piece is $8. And that is number one. So $8, number one for the pottery uh, candlestick holder. All right, now we're gonna be in a different part of the kitchen. Admittedly, before I found this, I did not know what St. Germain was. Trust me, I know what alcohol is. St. Germain is not in my cupboard. So this was a piece that I found at, uh, for people that are familiar with um, the, oh, it's one of the religious ones, not Goodwill, not Salvation Army, St. Vincent de Paul. Uh, for people that are familiar with St. Vincent de Paul, there is a St. Vincent Paul warehouse located down the street from where I live. And basically what it collects is all the stuff that isn't uppity enough to be in the St. Vincent de Paul retail shops. And this was one of them. So I guess they thought this was a lowbrow. 
I don't care. It was very cool. It is actually a recipe glass and the recipe is on the side. You take a St. Germain, you fill this up to this line with a sparkling wine or Sauvignon Blanc, which, you know, we all have that sitting us to our side. Then you fill to this line with club soda or sparkling water. And then up to this line with St. Germain. So from a marketing standpoint, you're using a lot of St. Germain in this one drink. So bully for them. But it's a very tall mixing glass. It actually came with this. Uh, it's a plastic mixing uh, stirrer, but it's tall enough. So it does go in this glass. I picked it up because I thought it would look cool with like a flower arrangement in it. It's extremely tall. Again, got my nifty little measuring stuff here. It is, it's a full 12 inches tall. So as, as vases go, that's a fairly tall vase. And just with the graphic on the front with the St. Germain, I just think it looks kind of cool. So anyway, that is $5 for the St. Germain mixing glass, and it is number 15. So 15 for $5, the St. Germain mixing glass. Moving from the kitchen into the living room, we've got a piece of wall decor. This is a piece that when I first saw it, I thought it was left in. It's what attracted my attention to it. Uh, it is not marked left in. So it doesn't mean that it isn't, but left in wasn't the only one to do these types of plaques. So this is a diamond plaque. It is stamped on the back that says F, uh, F K, uh, F Kistner, F N Kistner, K I S T N E R company in Chicago. And then it's got the made in Japan uh, foil stamp. I looked up the company and what they seem to be known for is a lot of Masonic items. So I don't know why they necessarily carried this. Maybe back in the day, they also just did decorative wear or whatever. This is in perfect condition. Every petal on every flower is in perfect condition. There are no chips, there are no cracks, there's no missing petals or anything. The bird is still lovingly staring up at one of the roses. All of the edges are really nicely done. And what I also like about this one, a lot, opposed to a lot of the pieces done of this era, it's trimmed in silver instead of trimmed in gold. So it has a slightly different look to it. A uh, really sweet piece. It is $6 for the wall plaque. And that is number 36. I should read them backwards. So for the wall plaques, number 36 for $6. All right, so moving into, okay, we're, gonna, we're not gonna go blue, or I was gonna say moving into the bedroom, but we won't go down there. there. Got a little baby booty. So this is just a sweet little piece. It's stamped in Nesco with the Japan foil stamp on the bottom. It has a really attractive floral design painted on the toe with the flowers and the butterflies. But the reason I really liked it is on both sides, it's the same design on both sides, there's this little Tyrolean boy with the little um, Von Trapp family hat uh, playing a recorder. God help that, that, that dog. I'm um, playing some sort of a flute-like material uh, to a dog who, now that I look at him, seems somewhat horrified. But it's just a super sweet piece. It came with this cording already in it, but I don't think this is original. Uh, you can tell it's like kind of frayed on the sides. And I, I think that's a replacement, um, but you put a ribbon in there. It's a boy on the side, but if you were to change this to like a pink ribbon or a purple ribbon, like this could definitely be for a baby girl as well. I'm not really sure what you'd use it for. It's just, it's just open. I mean, so like a really small planter, you could maybe use it as a trinket dish, but things will fall in there. Maybe, you know, I don't know if you'd want to put this on the changing table, you wouldn't put cotton swabs, whatever. But anyway, it's just a really cute piece. Uh, picked it up uh, fairly early on, just never listed it. So it's $5 for the UNESCO Baby Booty, and it is number 71. All right. If you hang around babies too much, you're going to need to drink. And here's the best way to make one. This, if you were on my uh, sale last week, most of what I sell is vintage. Etsy requires it to be vintage. Vintage is what I like. But I had a, a friend of mine who had a gift shop that I put some items in there. And those were a mix, a little bit of vintage, but also a lot of contemporary stuff. And there's several items in the sale tonight. Their shop was forced to close because the business went under during COVID. Regardless, I have all of these items that I can't list on Etsy. And I, this is a great way to, get, uh, to sell them. So this is a cocktail caddy in the shape of a golf bag. 
in the golf bag is this small little drinks mixer that seals very nicely. So it's got the strainer in the top because the golf ball unscrews in the top too. So you've got the little mixer, you have a golf club bottle opener, corkscrew combo that's in this little golf club piece. And then you've got these little, uh, the putters are all drink stirrers. So there's four putters that you have all in this little caddy that just would sit on your bar, or sit on your counter. It's got a really nice chrome finish to it. It's a black, like leatherette with that allig faux alligator skin to it. Um, it is marked on the bottom, I Godinger, and it is $12. So it's the golf themed cocktail set. It is $12 and it is number 26. 26 for $12. All right. Another item that I've had for a while and um, had a few people interested in it, they'd, sent, they'd send me questions, but for whatever reason, it never got picked up. So I don't know if I price it too high or whatever, but it's this little um, recipe box that has the little bird on the front of it. I guess he's flying very quickly because he's, you know, creating winds, wind stream behind him. I, I, to me, that almost looks like the cancellation marks from a postal mark. So I'm not sure why those are there. Um, it's an all wood box, hinge on the top, has recipes on the bottom. It has the original foil stamp showing that it's an UNESCO, uh, an UNESCO piece made in Japan. One of the questions I got, which was totally valid, was how big is it? And this is a three by five recipe card and it does fit in. Um, but I know some recipe cards are four by six. So this is a three by five recipe card holder. It is an UNESCO wooden recipe box from, uh, from Japan, $5 and it's number 61. The UNESCO recipe box number 61 for $5. I know Vinny's here. He got his call out shout out last week, but I'll shout out, shout out again. Uh, he was into vintage Christmas. I don't think this really falls into what he typically collects because it's not weird enough. Um, that's no judgment on you at all, Vinny. Uh, no, this is this is really more of a, it looks like a Lennox piece of Christmas, but it's actually not Lennox. It is Picard China. And Picard China has become one of my favorite uh, brands to find. They always do this cream color porcelain. I, as I understand, in some cases, somebody else made the porcelain and then they just decorated it. So I'm not sure how you're supposed to know the difference between the two. It does have the Picard stamp on the back made in the USA and decorated. This one is just this little scalloped edge, little trinket dish. It's got the holly design in the middle and then also the hollies and berries on the patterns on the side. Again, perfect condition. Got the gold trim. Gold trim is also in perfect condition. It is $6 for the Picard China Christmas dish. And it is number 34. So 34 gets you the Christmas dish for $6. All right. Heading back into the kitchen. We've got this little uh, pair of individual um, casseroles, or individual bakers. They've got the ridged, uh, the ridged design, kind of like the old Corningware Corel type design. But these are from a company called Shafford, which admittedly I'm not familiar with. Uh, the Roman numerals put them at 1980, uh, what did I figure out, 1980, 81. So they were from 1981, they are identical. They've got a fruit design um, all the way, or I guess fruit vegetable type design all the way around. You've got uh, eggplant, uh, radish, corn, and tomato. They're in really good condition. They have the um, they have the like kind of the rougher finish on the bottom that you would typically f uh, find in that kind of casserole, that kind of cookware material. But it's absolutely pristine. Um, so I don't think these were ever used. And they've got the little pea pod in the middle. So the two there's two of them. The two uh, Shafford individual casseroles are three dollars, and they're number fifty one. So number 51 for $3 is the uh, casseroles. Can you turn off your email? Yeah. 
We had a special request for our friend, Mr. Duck. Mr. Duck or Mr. Swan? Oh, no idea. All right, well, we can vote. Um, we've got a hull. I thought he was a swan. Maybe he's a duck. I do not know. He is marked on the bottom that he is hull. He has the impressed mark. So hopefully you can kind of see there, impressed on the top. And then also a stamp at the bottom. Uh, the stamp, I'm not actually sure what that refers to. I don't, if anyone knows, I'd love to know because I don't know that much about Hull. Uh, this was the first auction I ever attended. And I got a, a set of s several pieces of Hull, all in this Hull, all in this colorway. So this is the larger of them. I do know that I think initially these were available or sold as a set where there was kind of like the big one in the middle and then there were the identical shape, but they were the significantly smaller ones. So if you look for these, that's something important to note is you have to look at the measurements because they were very well made, even the smaller ones. Usually you can look at something that's smaller and you can tell there's just something not quite right. Like that's that doesn't look right. Something's proportionally off. The little ones photograph just like him. Uh, so they did a really good job. I only have the big one. He is $7.00 for this big uh, central platter, again, a pl planter. He's in perfect condition, no chips, anything in this greenish, yellowish colorway. He is $7 for the whole swan, and that is number 10. So the whole swan, number 10 for $7. Um, can you give me the little plates and cups on two? Because I also remembered that one of the people that signed in very early was, and congratulations to Debbie Gray for getting number 10. That puts you into the drawing as well. Um, one of the people that's on here has been very supportive of the, uh, vintage reselling community, considering he lives in New Zealand, uh, 1969 Nathaniel shows up in a lot of different, uh, um, uh, live, live streams. So everyone say hello to Nathaniel. And he had a, for a short period of time, which he's never fully explained to me, he had a, um, show off your bunker challenge video that ended up getting taken down. But uh, so we need to get, we need to pressure him to put that back up. But he had watched one of the videos or one, maybe one of my haul videos. And he had commented on this set of Steubenville pottery uh, from Woodfield that he liked, that he thought it was attractive. Now there is no way these are going to New Zealand. The, the freight would kill you. So again, when I bring up the names for people, again, it's just because I, it's something that makes me think of you. Uh, and I thought it'd be fun to kind of tie it all together. So in, in honor of Nathaniel, I have a pair of snack sets. They are Steubenville pottery. They're the Woodfield pattern. So there, it's this uh, leaf shaped dish with the little handle thing on the side. As most snack sets are set up, there's the little place for the cup. So this one has the matching coffee cup to go in it. Uh, the, cup, the cups themselves are not marked, but the plates do have the impressed mark of Woodfield by manufactured by Steubenville. So this is for a pair of them. It's for the dark green color. And then also for this like kind of salmon-y color. I kind of, I like the way these two look together. Uh, this falls under the category of there are more of these. So in some cases there's been more than one person to want them. I'm selling this as a pair. So this specific pair, the green and the salmon, uh, you get both, all four pieces, the two complete sets for $4. And that is number 59. So 59 for the snack sets of these two colors. If you miss out on these two colors, I have three sets in total. I can offer you other colors. So if you miss out, go ahead and, and call out for it. Or if you want all of them, say, I want them all. You know, the, you can be, you can do your, uh, uh, who was the, who was the little girl in uh, Willy Wonka that wanted it all? Um, Veruca. So be a Veruca, you can take all of them. Or if you only want one, somebody else wants them, I will reach out to you with the other colors and you can pair them up. So that was number 59 for the Woodfield snack sets, $4 and you get a two complete sets of the plate and the, uh, in the cup. Regarding cups, I've also got some glassware. These I picked up, I will be 100% honest. I picked these up totally personally for a personal reason. I picked these up actually down near uh, Jeffrey's Way. It was the Pink pink Elephant. I wanna say it was the name of the antique shop. I was that weekend while I was traveling back from a business trip, I was going to be going to a luncheon 
hosted by the 20s, 30s, 40s Glass Society of Illinois. And so it's their monthly meeting or bi-monthly meeting. And what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to bring stuff that you to eat off of. You're supposed to like set your own plate. I did. I know these are not 20s, 30s, and 40s, but I became desperate because I don't really have any glassware like that that I use. I resell it, you know. So it was one of those. So I found these, brought them in. I think they're from the 70s. Uh, they. I did some research on them. They are the Ivy Panel Glass Tumbler. They are very heavy. Each one of these is probably almost a pound, but you can see it's very thick-walled glass. So I did use this as my beverage uh, container, and no one. No one made fun of me. So, you know, it is that is what I worry, lose sleep about at night, people making fun of me. So that's why I do YouTube videos because, you know, everyone's so kind on YouTube. Um, there is a set of six of these. They are all, and I'm not gonna pick them all up at one time, but there's a total of six. They're all in perfect condition, no chips, no cracks. They all have that ivy pattern that appears on three different sides uh, with, the, with the panel, I mean, the beveled panels in between. The entire set of six, is available for $8 and the set of six is number nine. So for number nine, for $8, you get all six of the Ivy panel tumblers. And like I said, I probably, I know they're not they're not early because they're so heavy. These like seem more like a 70s era, um, like really solid, you know, dinnerware. And it looks like those are going to Jeffrey. Oh. Now I'm going to know your home address. No, just kidding. I already knew your home address. Ha! Uh, all right. So the next piece. Several of these things I've picked up a long time ago and for no good reason, just never listed them. And I, this one, there's like maybe a minorly good reason. Etsy, again, the way Etsy works, and now that Jeffrey's leaving it, I, I'm not going to be able to pick his brain, but... There's a lot of things you can do to try and list and promote your items so that people find it. And one of the things that I discovered is that if it wasn't a maker or wasn't there wasn't something very specific, I was having a hard time selling items. And so this was an item that I never ended up listing because I didn't have a maker for it. But isn't this awesome? Again, welcome to my childhood. Ours was not this cool. I will say this is probably, I would think that this is more like a 60s, uh, very early 70s. Ours, I want to say, was electric, um, so you like burned yourself every time you put the bread in there. But it's got a pottery pot. The problem is the only thing with the pot is it's marked Japan. There's no label. Now you can see the bottom does have like some scorch marks, so it looks like this may have actually been used. So it's no surprise that it doesn't have a label. But it's one of those cases where. I didn't know how to list it. So the set comes with the, the pottery. I will show there is a darker color on the bottom that like kind of appears to be a stain, but I don't know if that was, it's like runs all the way along the bottom. So it kind of looks like it might've been the glaze when they originally made it, but I don't know that for sure. But there's no chips, no cracks. There is a seam that runs up here that this was originally a formed piece of ceramic that they just didn't do a great job you know, rubbing that down smooth, but it's not a crack. It's literally just the seam from where it came out of the mold. It has a little wooden top. The stand has four of the little forks and each fork has a color code in it. So you don't end up, you know, cross contaminating each other's food. And then a little place in the bottom for the, um, for the, for the candle. The bottom itself has little rubber feet, but again, the wood base is not marked. So I don't know whose this is, but it's a Japan fondue set. It is $12, and if you would like it, you claim it with number 73. So 73 for the Pottery Fondue uh, set, $12. All right. This was a piece that took me some time to do some research on and then discovered that it should have been obvious once I realized what it was. This piece of Avon, it's a piece of Avon glass. Uh, like Avon company. It's got like, and see, it's, it's actually happening here too. I actually had photographed this to go on my site and on my Etsy store. And it looked, once I finished it, I put it all in storage and everything. I suddenly looked at all the pictures and the color in almost every picture, the color had changed. What's showing up on my screen looks very pale. 
compared to what I'm seeing in real life. So I'm trying to hold it in a way that maybe some of the real color shows up, but it's a celadon green um, color, a really pretty celadon green color. It's It's got highlights and low lights. You can kind of even see with the discoloration, you can see like along the edges, it's a little bit lighter. It's got, for lack of a better term, it feels almost like a rubbery cis, like consistency to the outside. And it's, I guess at one point it was a, either a perfume bottle or like a bath salts bottle or something like that. And there's a number of different ones in the series. This is the Celadon. You can see there's a little bird on a branch with a flower. Uh, and then on the back side is a different bird of a bird in flight with another branch, flowering branch. Very attractive. But it was one of those cases I didn't feel comfortable listing it because the color, I just didn't know, and I still don't know enough about photography to do the color correction to get it to show off correctly. So I'm just going to sell this one here. It's $3 for the Avon. I'm calling it a vase, although I do believe at one point it was a bottle. For um, $3, it is number five. So if you're interested in the Avon vase, number five, you get it for $3. Showing off something else for $3. This is, you know, I'm not sure there's a market for this or not, but I'm throwing it in here because I know a lot of you, some of you are YouTubers yourself. You do a lot of creative crafting and things like that. This is something I picked up in a box lot um, that I'm really selling. This, this entire stack I'm selling for $3. And it's a, basically it's a mix of individual saucers. So we've got this lusterware piece. This one's marked in Narco Japan another uh, um, lusterware piece. This one's marked March Daffodil, and then its sister is marked February Violet. These are all saucers, and I don't have the teacups to any of them. So it's one of those cases that I offered them to a friend of mine who does, um, she does mosaics um, to chop them up, but they're all in good condition. They're, there's no chips, there's no cracks. They're attractive, but they're just, loose pieces you know so i'm just basically i want to give them a, i want to put them in a good home so this is a set of 11 individual uh, saucers there is a pair there's one that, but we don't still don't have the cups this is actually um my miter tyke uh bavaria these are actually nicer quality um but i don't have the cups so you get all 11 of the mix and max saucers for three dollars using number eight so if you're interested in a set of 11 saucers for, eight, for three bucks, claim it with number eight. All right, this is uh, also kind of a mismatch, but not quite as bad as the other one. This is two pieces that I did actually buy together, but after I brought them home, I have a feeling they no longer have, that they're not, I think it's a marriage. So this is a cradle that would fit some form of a casserole or some form of a serving dish. It was sold to me with this serving dish in it. And I'm not going to say it doesn't go. I mean, it sits in there, but one is aluminum and the other is chrome. So the finishes are slightly off, but I'm not sure those go together. So I never, again, this is another one. I just never listed it because I wasn't convinced what I was selling was 100% correct. The aluminum piece is marked Continental Silver Company. It's got this little, I'd say it's probably from the 50s or 60s. It's got the embossed floral design on the top. The finial is a little open rose. Uh, finial is in great shape. It's got a scalloped edge. It was a hand hammer, or not a hand hammer, but it's a hammered piece. It's all still in really good condition, no dents. The bowl itself. I don't know if this has would have had a glass insert. I have some others that have glass inserts, but I think if there was a glass insert, the lid wouldn't go on. So I have a feeling it's not, but that means you're serving food in bare aluminum. And I don't know if that's common, like you would want to put salad dressing in that. So anyway, it's a, it's kind of an odd little mix. I have a feeling the cradle is probably the one that's going to have the value because I think you could put a piece of Pyrex in there, but I'm selling the pair, even if it's a marriage, I'm selling the pair for $5 and that is number seven. So that is the cradle and the bowl uh, for $5 for number seven. All right, I'm going to be sensitive to time, even though I started a little bit late, be sensitive to time because I do want to switch over to uh, trustee's bargain bin so we can get through the $2 stuff. But I've got a couple things I wanted to do before then. Uh, this is a piece of art. I haven't done a lot of art because I've gotten burned trying to sell some bigger pieces. So I'm trying to focus on smaller pieces. 
But this was something that I picked up that I thought was gorgeous. I put, put a loop to it. It is not a print. It doesn't have the little dots in it. And when I did a Google lens search, it appears the what kept coming up were examples of Japanese wood cuts. So I don't know. I, first, I, I don't exactly know. It's got the Japanese characters down in the bottom. So I do believe this is would be considered a Japanese wood cut. It's, I don't know its age. It has a mat that's got a double mat to it that's somewhat hinged. I did, was able to open it up, but there's nothing on the back. It's a really nice grade paper that this is done on, but it appears to be attached to a piece of cardboard, which is bad. It, is, I, it could be acid free and maybe it's not cardboard, cardboard, but that's just something to be aware of. Um, is a beautiful piece. The buyer has a choice. I can sell it, send it to you in the frame, but the frame is nothing special. The frame is just a regular gold trimmed you know, frame. It's gonna add to the weight if you wanted it. So it's, it would just cost more to ship. But if you want it in there for protection, totally fine. But if you just want this, I'll package it nicely so that it won't get damaged. This is a Japanese woodcut. It is $15 and it's available as number 32. So number 32 for the Japanese woodcut is $15. If you watch some of my videos before, I have a, a, an affinity for tins, but not the types of tins that most people want. I don't do advertising tins. I do decorative tins. And partially because I started into the resale business from my theater background, I had all these tins that I'd use for set dressing. They look great because they look like porcelain on stage. But I ended up create, uh, collecting a lot of them. And so now I'm trying to you know, sell some of them off. There's a whole video dedicated to my tin collection that actually Monica bought a couple of pieces from. This is another piece uh, to my tin collection that I'm selling. It is a West German candy tin. It is stamped on the back with the manufacturing or production number. But on the bottom, you can see it's Klan quality. And then it shows made in Western Germany. So it's a really nice looking piece with this, the historic, you know, coachman type, you know, paintings with little um, castle landscapes and everything all the way. On, and it's decorated on all four sides. So that just shows the quality of this type of piece. They didn't limit themselves to just decorate, you know, one side. It's got the, a really nice beaded, you know, brass uh, decorative trim. This is showing a little bit of where you can see a little bit of discoloration along the edges. Uh, it's certainly not structural. It might be able to be cleaned off. Um, but yeah, so you, you've got, it's a really nice piece hinged with the gold wash on the inside. So the West German candy tin is $9 and you can have it for number 62. It's number 62 for $9. All right, so we've hit 801, um, looking to see, oh, Superior Girl Vintage is here. Um, all right, so I actually have one item that I'll do for Superior Girl Vintage. She was on my, she was on my celebrity watch list. So welcome, glad you're able to get off of work. Um, if you can give me, this will be the last piece for my normal sale and then I'll enter the duck. I'll enter the um, trustee's bargain bin next. So this is, there's no reason a duck should make me think of Superior Girl Vintage, but Superior, Lake Superior hunting ducks. That's where my brain goes. So this is a really, a, I, I feel an attractive looking duck decoy planter. Again, perfect condition, absolutely great color on the face, no chips, no cracks on the beak, no issues on the, on the rim or on the edge. It has a mark but it's an impressed like Japanese mark. So I don't know what that says. And I don't know if that is a production mark for any other company. It doesn't feel to me like a DIY piece because it's the bisque porcelain. And then the eyes, this is a slightly, this is more of a matte finish. It's, it's just really nicely done. So this duck planter is $5.00. And it is number 72, which I swear we already had number 72. No, we're good. Okay, we're good. So duck planner, number 72 for $5. All right. So um, Amelia is going to run through the, she's going to run through the comments really quick and make sure we caught everybody um, so that there's no surprises with, uh, 
we want to make sure everyone's in, in the drawing. And if only 10 people bought, all 10 of you, yay, you win. No, there's at least 11. I counted there's, like 10 minutes Okay, ago. there's at least 11. So we are going to have to count count how many there are. I may just give everybody a gift certificate. All right. Um, but while she's doing that, I'm going to pull out trustee's bargain bin. And I don't have the room on the table to actually pull out the bin. But believe it or not, it is a bin. So it's it, it's owning its name. So I'm gonna set it next to me. And the first thing I've got on here is actually because I see that uh, Michelle from Cozy, um, Cozy something living and her name just slid out of my my uh, my uh, chat. So now I can't remember the name of her channel. So I apologize, um, but she does a lot of junk journaling. And so this was actually something I'd set aside for her, not necessarily the cocktails, but um, you, know, you can have those too. This was a book that I had picked up to sell and basically it got caught in something and the the um, the book binding split and all the pages started falling out. So I was gonna get rid of it. I didn't want to donate it to Goodwill. And I'm like, you know what? These are kind of cool. So there's all right. This is for this is for Vinny. Um they're all advertisements, some old advertisements. So just some really cool graphics that could make for some cool scrapbooking or for some junk journaling, which I know uh, she is very skilled at doing. So there's all the art associated with that. And then there's just some really cool product photography of some close-ups of you know drinks and things like that. Everything in Trusty's Bargain Bin is $2. So this stack of junk journaling art uh, pages is $2 and it's number 213. So for two bucks, two, one, three. So what's the verdict of how many? There are 13. So we have 13 um, per people who purchased. All 13 of you will get a $10 gift certificate. So we're not gonna deal with the last people chosen for kickball on, on, on the PE, in the PE uh, field. So everyone will get a gift certificate. And hey, I'm up to 180 subscribers anyway, so I can give, I'll, I'll give more. So you all get a $10 gift certificate. Once you pay your bill, I'll send you the coupon to do that. And everyone notice my brand new Hazel Atlas crisscross mixing bowl. Um, if you watch one of my unboxing videos, it'll be one of the ones I post in the future. I've already recorded it. You'll see why I only have three in the set and not all four. So that is uh, that. So we're going to crank through uh, bar Trusty's Bargain Bin. This is a little piece that I had uh, just put up on my Instagram sale. And it's one of these cases where... I don't know how else to do it. So I figured the live sale is the best. I pride myself in not having anything with any damage. This piece, I didn't think had any damage. And if you look at it, even when I tried to photograph it, it was almost impossible to find. There's this little section here, right where it meets the gold paint, that's rough. And you cannot tell. You can tell it if you go to pick it up right there. But it's in, it's really cute. And because of that little mark, he's two, he's two bucks. I'm just going to, I, I want to give him a good home. He's not worth being thrown away just for something that small. Um, so for two bucks, little bluebird, bluebird planter is two, two, one. This is a new addition to Trusty's Bargain Bin um, because with the uh, Hazel Atlas bowls, I also got a Hazel Atlas uh, one pound butter tub. And if I put it upside down, it holds my sweet and low. So this is probably about 25 years old. I think I got this right. I think this was a wedding present from someone who was obviously very cheap. But uh, this is not marked, um, but it's kind of like the Corningware type, you know, material. Jet black, top and bottom. Perfect can de it is designed to be a sugar caddy. Two bucks for number two, two, five, two bucks for the sugar caddy, two, two, five. As I mentioned, I had a lot of tins. Uh, this was one that didn't end up in the sale. This has a very seventies, uh, early eighties look to it. So it's probably like right on the cusp. The, the stamp is 1971 on the back. That's the copyright for it. Um, but it's just, it, it was an odd piece. The rest I sold in pairs. This one's available by itself for $2 for number two, three, two. Barb is here. Sweet. Okay, we're going back. We're going reverse. Um, what happened? Uh, can you come check what's happening to your computer? Oh, I'm sure it's fine. No, I just, I lost everything. It's fine. Okay, sorry. Using Amelia's computer again. Hello. Um, so it's the wrapped piece underneath that one. So it's not that one, it's that one. So hi, Barb. 
So Barb is joined, so we get to go reverse. Um, if you follow Jeffrey's page, page, if you follow his YouTube channel, which I highly recommend you do, um, he ends up, he and Barb will go shopping sometimes. He will go with, we're good, we're good, we're doing so um, good. Amelia seems stressed. What are you guys, what are you guys doing to Amelia? Um, the, uh, he'll go shopping with Barb. Barb is Aaron's sister. And uh, they did a great, a fun interview during their quarantine, uh, just kind of getting to know them. Uh, but one of the things that Barb collects is restaurant wear. So this literally is still wrapped up from storage. This is on my Etsy store right now. So we are going to probably very loudly open it up. And I'm now including this in this sale in honor of Barb. I'm not expecting Barb, I'm not expecting you to buy it, just in case you missed that part. But because you do restaurant wear, I wanted to include a piece of restaurant wear in my sale because I enjoy watching you on his channel. Uh, and actually, if you guys remember, I I sent you guys gifts. You opened them on air. I was the one that gave Stella her little porcelain, um, the porcelain uh, pheasant. That was actually a dog squeaky toy, but it looked like a porcelain statue. Anyway, um, so this is a piece of restaurant wear from Rego, R-E-G-O. Admittedly, I gave uh, Barb a piece of restaurant wear as part of the gifts package that I sent down for friend mail. I still don't know anything more about restaurant wear than I did then. I think I gave her like this weird custard cup or something that I'm sure she didn't know what to do with. Uh, so anyway, I just thought this one was really kind of cool because it's got this the little floral design, the yellow flowers with the yellow border, a little bit of green. I don't, I would have guessed that this is 50s, but that's based on absolutely nothing. The date stamp might mean something, but I did do some research and I could not find the Rego date stamp information. So I don't know, you know, it's just, I would say from appearance, this seems to be something that would be like in a diner in the fifties. So this is way cheaper now than it is on Etsy store for $3. You can get the Rego restaurant wear plate dinner plate and it is the size of a dinner plate. It is number 78. So 78 for $3 gets you the Rego restaurant wear dinner plate. <laughs> All right. Well, Jeffrey's either going to, Keep it for himself and taunt you with it, Barb, or he's the one that's buying it for you. So congratulations, Jeffrey, for getting the restaurant wear plate. All right, back to uh, Bargain Bin. Another odd piece, not, well, it, that's not odd, just it's a loan bowl. So I'm selling it through the Bargain Bin for two bucks. It is the provincial pattern from Metlocks, perfect condition, no chips, no cracks. It's got the poppy trail stamp on the back. It's got the rooster pattern with the little burgundy uh, dots with the green. It's $2 for this um, bowl, rimmed bowl. It's number 238. 238 for the Metlox bowl. Okay, as I break everything in the bin. All right, uh, next, for some reason, I was buying baby items, which is you know somewhat interesting because I don't like kids. But um, this is a baby, baby planter. For a minute there, I thought I had a crack, but it does not. It was used as a planter. You get some of the dirt right along with it. Um, it is stamped with a foil label on the back that just says giftware company, Nancy Pew, Japan. So it is a Japan piece. So it has a little bit of, a little bit of, um, um, age to it. It says Japan, both in the foil and in the impressed mark. It's the little baby rattle planter and it is number 240, 240 for the baby, baby planter. The little gift shop that closed, um, you'll see a theme in a lot of what I'm showing you. It was very cocktail driven. And so I have some random glassware that it's just not worth putting online, selling it individually. So literally, if you are, particularly if you're buying other things and you can spread out the cost of the freight, you can get some great pieces. This is, I actually don't know what kind of glass this is. I'm sure there's a name for the shape. That it's some sort of a sherry glass, but it's got the little shamrocks on it. So I don't know if you're, you know, if you down some, you know, Irish Jameson or something in it, but it was marked at the gift shop. It was $5, but I'm including it in trustee's bargain bin for $2 as number 204. So 204, $2 gets you the little shamrock plate or it's shamrock um, glass. Why do I have another baby booty? Where are these things coming from? So this one is much simpler than the one I shared earlier. It's a bisque porcelain. It's, it's Inesco imports. It's marked on the bottom. 
I tried, I had it at the gift shop for $3. It's here at the bargain bin for $2, but it's got the UNESCO stamp on it. So again, it has some age. I'm going to assume these are original because they are glued on. They're not threaded through. These are fake. Uh, and so this little thread is, is glued on. But again, it's just a little, a little trick of dish. Maybe you could put Q-tips or something in it. I have no idea. Very cute. 210. So 210 for the little, it's like a yellowish color uh, baby booty. More alcohol. All right. So this one is a Kahlua latte. I fell in love when I was stocking her shop. These are all recipe glasses. And so this is a recipe glass for a Kahlua latte that you hold uh, Stoli vodka, milk, coffee, and ice cubes. So there's lines for each one of them on how to make this drink. So this is a Kahlua latte mixed drink, mixed drinking glass for 214. Again, everything in the bargain bin is $2. So it's 214 for the uh, Kahlua glass. If Kahlua is not your jam, how about Mr. and Mrs. T premium uh, Bloody Mary mix? So you've got the perfect Bloody Mary, has a recipe right on the back. So for the mixing glass, for the Mr. and Mrs. T Bloody Mary mix, $2 for 218. So 218 gives you the Mr. and Mrs. T premium blend, the perfect Bloody Mary, 218 for two bucks. Yes, there's a theme. It's another drinking glass. This one is one of my favorites, actually. And I believe I have two of these. So if somebody wants, if two, more than one person claims that I have enough to give to both of you. But this one, isn't this awesome? First of all, the graphics are absolutely cool. It looks mid-century modern, but I've, I've seen enough of these that I'm pretty sure this is a, re, a, re, a reproduction to look retro. But regardless, it has the recipes all the way on here for a martini, cosmopolitan, whiskey sour, Manhattan, margarita, daiquiri, Tom Collins. Yeah, all, it's just awesome. And it's just some great colors in perfect condition. No chips, no cracks. Another mixed, mixed drinking glass uh, sold in the shop. Well, listed in the shop, uh, for the gift shop for five bucks. You're selling it for $2.00. Two two four, so this is the uh, recipe mixing glass. Two two four, two dollars. As I said, I don't really do a lot with art. This is actually coming from I hate to use the term my personal collection, but these are just little posters, and they're chocolate themed. So who who wouldn't love that? So they're French themed chocolate posters. Uh, they are standard sizes. They fit in standard size frames. I want to say eleven by fourteen. Yeah, I measured it earlier. Um, we can kind of see the size. They all have the same general appearance, upside down, of the of kind of the chocolate brown with the blue and then kind of the French design. So it's a set of all four of these little prints. They're not stamped or marked anyway. They're, they're not art pieces. Like these are probably from Hobby Lobby or something. But you get all four of them for $2 and it's number 230. So 230 is the set of four chocolate prints. When I started watching everyone's videos and really learning what everyone was doing and selling, um, well, look at me, I can see me. Uh, Chromex kept coming up as a kind of a name to be on the lookout for. I think Jeffrey mentioned it, you know, several other people like Chromex is good. This not so good. Uh, Chromex, what I discovered after I picked up this piece of Chromex is there should have been a glass dish that sits in this recessed area. I don't think it detracts, it's still a cool piece, but it, to function for food, if you were gonna use this as a serving dish, you'd need that glass dish. So as a result, I'm selling this for two bucks. Piece, it is Chromex, it is marked Chromex on the back. I don't know if you want to see it. It's a kind of a stamp and kind of see it there. There you go. Chromex made in the USA, $2 for this. It's 237 for $2 for the Chromex tray. Yes, I have a drinking problem. So more cocktail themed. Uh, these are Pottery Barn uh, plates. They This one is the uh, lemon drop design. This is $2 for this little snack plate. Pottery Barn lemon drop is two four one. And then the other one I have is the Apple Teeny. It's also Pottery Barn plate. They were listed in the shop for $3. This one is two four five. So the apple teeny is two four five, and the lemon drop is two four one. So each plate is two dollars. 
this one, I have, again, I have a feeling I put this in the bargain bin because I don't think this is right. I got this as is with these little roly poly glasses in this drinks carrier. But what's the point of a drinks carrier that only holds two glasses? So when I did some research online, I think these are supposed to be a creamer and a sugar that are still the roly poly shape. But I, and I don't want to have to go digging for that. So I'm just selling it. So for two bucks, you get the entire cradle and these two glasses. If you're lucky enough to have the sugar and the creamer, you now have something that's worth way more than two bucks just by the cradle itself. Um, so for $2, you have the cradle plus the two roly poly glasses. Number 249. 249 for the little cradle with two glasses. 249 is $2. Yep. More alcohol. So this one is a mixing glass or the, like the actual like traditional cocktail shaker. It's got the strainer built into the lid and then the lid itself does come off. I just can't do it with my wrist. Um, but anyway, it is a Mr. Bartender product, stainless steel. I sold it. I had it listed to sell in the gift shop for 10 bucks. I'm selling it here for $2. So $2 primarily because I have like eight of these. Um, not of this design though. So this one's $2, 208. So it's 208 for $2. You get a stainless cocktail shaker. You can have your own Mad Men parties when you're allowed to have people in your house again. So that's 208. Uh, this piece was fun to pick up, but again, I never listed it because of, I'm going to say there's a little bit of condition issues. It's, it's in good condition considering its age. Um, but it's heavy duty crazing and the, the luster on the edges, I, I don't think it's right. I think it's starting to wear. So it gives kind of a weird reflective look, but you know, if you're, if you're in the habit of holding, you know, Christopher Columbus parties, uh, this is just be the most awesome serving bowl you could possibly ever have. It's a Homer Laughlin piece. It is dated C seven N five. And I meant to look that up before the sale. I can't remember what the C7 stands for. So those of you that know it off the top of your head, if you want to throw that out there. But just by the look of this, this is I would say this is probably from the 40s, um, if not earlier. So it's Homer Laughlin. It is stamped, has the date stamp included, which some usually they actually have a two digit, so you know the year. So the C7, I don't remember. what You can actually see there's quite a bit of crazing. So you can get the camera to show it there. There's quite a bit of crazing in there. So it's a cool looking piece, but it's really at this point a decorative piece. You couldn't put food in this. So it's two bucks. So the Christopher Columbus Bowl, two bucks from Homer Laughlin. It is number 219. 219 for two bucks for the Christopher Columbus Bowl. I ended up getting a couple oddball pieces that in early on that I'm like, oh yeah, these are these are great. And I did the research and I saw what they sold for, but individual plates don't sell particularly well on Etsy. And so I'm just going to offload some of these. I think I paid I paid probably more than $2 for this plate itself. But isn't this fantastic? It is a Stonegate, Stonegate, Germany, and it's the Wooddale pattern, but it's this black and gray and taupe color with a platinum trim. It is gorgeous. And the Stonegate pattern or the Stonegate company, when you do some comps on it, it sells fairly well. So it's why I bought it. But as a standalone dinner plate on Etsy, there's not a huge market for that. And then it costs money to ship it and everything. So particularly if you're buying multiple items tonight, shipping won't be so bad. But even if you have to pay for it by itself, it's two bucks and it's way, worth way more than two bucks. So that is two, two, six for the Stonegate dinner, dinner plate in the Wooddale pattern. Two, two, six. Considering I sell books for a living, I don't carry books very often, but this is one that I couldn't pass up. I had it for my personal collection. It's called The Library Book. It's a nonfiction title. It is not a first edition. I always said, if I do books, I'm going to get first editions. Now, I'm not that snobby. And if it was a first edition, it'd be more than two bucks. But it is a hardcover book, a dazzling love letter to a beloved institution, and an investigation into one of its greatest mysteries from the best-selling author hailed as a national treasure by the Washington Post. So it's in absolutely perfect condition. The, the corners are not bent. There's no cracks on the spine. Uh, yes, I did. Uh, there might, there's a little bit of a buff right there. Uh, yes, I picked it up from my personal collection, but I never read it. So I'm selling it for two bucks. Don't judge me. Um, I'm selling it for two bucks. It is two, three, one for the library book by Susan Orlean. Another oddball piece. 
did not start life as an oddball piece. This started as a complete set of four. And I was very excited to have it. And I took it to my antique, the uh, antique shop, um, the, the showcase I have at the antique mall, which I found, Jeffrey, watching one of your videos. I have a place at the Rockford Antique Mall, East, East State. Anyway, um, in process of setting one of the deliveries up, I dropped the bag that held these. This was the lone survivor. So I didn't put it in the shop. I don't know why I should have just sold it as is right there, but this one's in perfect condition. It's not cracked, not chipped. It's just, it's all, it's lonely. So it's an antique auto car. It's got the white uh, design on it with the um, 1909 Nash Rambler is the car that's on there uh, with the like My Fair Lady dressed people, Edwardian dress. Uh, again, I was trying to sell it. I tried to sell the gift shop for three bucks. You get it here for two bucks and it's number two, three, six. All right, it's 824. So I'm trying to watch the time. We're getting toward the bottom of the of the bin. But wait, there's more alcohol. So this is just, I thought it was a very cool shot glass. But it's nothing particularly special. It's just these are etched into it. So they and, and they do feel rough. So I think they are cut into it. I think this is cut glass. I don't think it's pressed. It's it's got this flared top, which makes me, for some reason, when I thought it, I vaguely remember as a kid, we, not that we had lobster very often, but that there were little butter dishes that kind of looked like this um, with this flared top. So I don't know if this is a melted butter dish or if this is a, a shot glass, but it's very cool. I think it's very much of your, of the era uh, of like maybe the fifties or the sixties. It's absolutely beautiful. It's two bucks and it's two for two. Right. Okay. Um, I was just reminded by my helper that I, and when I introduced it, I don't think I said it to start with, uh, as we get, as we start wrapping up, I'll, I'll be closing up soon. Cause I want to be sensitive to everyone's time. If you claim something this evening, you need to send me an email. My email address is trusty huckster mercantile at gmail.com. I'll have that in the comments as well. Uh, trusty huckster mercantile at gmail.com. Apologize, it's so long, but TH Mercantile was stolen by, already taken by somebody. Um, send me the email. I will then, if in the email, give me your mailing address and the, uh, with the zip code and your, and obviously the email that you use for PayPal, if you have a PayPal account. I will email you a PayPal invoice. You do not need to have a PayPal account. You can just pay with a regular credit card, but I will process everything through invoices. You don't have to worry about the friends and family payments or any of that kind of stuff. I will send you a proper invoice through PayPal and I will absorb all the fees. But you need to contact me because what I discovered last week is if you don't contact me, I have no way of contacting you. I see the live chat, but you're not, I can't click on you. So there's no way, even if you have a YouTube channel, I'd have to try and search and not everyone has. So it's trusty huckster mercantile at gmail.com and Amelia is entering that into the um, chat. This is one of the few pieces that I'm admitting to include. I almost didn't, but I'm including it. it. It does have damage. There's a hairline crack that runs down this outer side, but I don't think anyone's gonna use this uh, for a shot glass, although I'm sure that's what it was for. It is the alpha, uh, Alpha, Gamma, Psi, uh, either for eternity or sorority, their pink rose formal from 1951. So the fact that it had the date on it, even though it's got the crack on it, I, it's just too cute to you know just throw away. So if you can give this a good home, you can have them for two bucks. The pink rose formal shot glass slash toothpick holder, two, four, eight. So it's two, four, eight for the little shot glass toothpick holder. Yes, more alcohol. Uh, these are Bailey's cups. They've got the embossed um, symbol on the back, on the bottom for Bailey's. It's a set marked mine and yours. Perfect condition. I had them listed at the gift shop for five bucks. You can get the set here for two bucks for number 202. I've only got a couple of items left, so I'm hopefully going to finish this bin. This, I believe, is a cigarette, or I believe this is an ashtray or cigarette holder, but it could be for a number of different things. It's a bowling ball. It is marked a MAFCO or MAFCO, M-A-F-C-O product from Japan. It's got the original paper label on the bottom, unfinished, you know, the darker redware glaze on the bottom, but the cool drip glaze on the top of the, of the bowling ball with the opening in the back. 
you can put business cards in there. You could maybe put a very small, like the frogs that hold the, hold the sponge, you know, very small sponge. It's a bowling ball. So it's just kind of cute, but it's, I, again, didn't really know how to list it. Selling it for two bucks here tonight, number 209. Two bucks, 209 for the bowling ball. Now the shot glass, this is a fun one. I am based outside Chicago. Uh, this is a Chicago Hard Rock Hotel shot glass. So it's got the Hard Rock Hotel logo on the back. It's got the graphic of the skyline on the front. And uh, it's $2 and it's two one two. And I saw one of the people that's in the sale, I'm gonna pull something out, gonna go reverse. You grab me the two glasses. This I forgot to include earlier. Katie is here and this is also relevant for Vinny as well. Um, the hard rock made me think of it. I also have this glassware. Now this is not from the bargain bin. These are not $2. So I don't mean to confuse everybody, but this is an honor of Katie from vintage and vinyl. If you haven't checked out her channel, go do so. She's not a reseller, but she does some great videos sharing her collection. And one of them is a Coca-Cola collection. Um, this is a global Coke glassware where it's got Coca-Cola, but then it's got the brand Coca-Cola in different languages all the way around. So it's got, um, English, Arabic, Chinese, Hebrew, Japanese, and that's it. It's all around. So this is a pair of glasses. That is five dollars. You get both glasses for five dollars, and it is number sixty-nine. So I forgot I had those set aside when I saw uh, Katie made a comment. So these were in her honor. Not expecting Katie to buy them, but if you'd like cookware glasses, number sixty-nine, uh, five dollars and you've, you've got those. And I will say anybody who's buying in the bargain bin too, um, if there's a lot of new people, you'll all get gift certificates too. All right, this is what everyone needs. I've got a few things left. Everyone needs an absinthe spoon. So why don't you take four? These are modern, very inexpensively made. They say uh, absent on the end. So the idea of these is you put this across a glass. There's a little lip here that holds it in place. You put the sugar cube on this where the holes are, sugar cube on top, and then you drip the absinthe over the sugar cube so it dissolves. I don't even know if that's right. I think I watched one, watched Moulin Rouge one too many times. But anyway, so this is a set of four of them. I had them listed in the gift shop for $3 each. You're getting all four for two bucks um, because I just need to get rid of them. And that's 217 for the four absinthe uh, spoons. This is another piece that falls in the, you know, there's a little bit of damage to it, but I want to make sure it gets a good home because it's made in occupied Japan. And I love the idea of these things that are stamped in occupied Japan. It's a little children's teacup and saucer. It's got a little chip right here. You can kind of see it's white on white, so it's not super obvious, but you can feel it. And the edge, you can see there's a scallop trim to the top of all these. A couple of the edges have a little bit of a nick in them. So this is really a decorative shelf piece, you know, maybe a tall shelf so that it's really far away from people's eyes. But it's I'm just, two bucks. I figure at this point, I wanted to have a good home that somebody will enjoy it. Even though it's got damage, it can't get thrown out. So it's a cute little teacup and saucer for two, two, three, Occupy Japan for $2. Uh, I don't have a lot of jewelry, but I have some. And so this was a piece that I put originally was in the sale last week and I just decided another piece of jewelry I sold did not sell. I just put this in the bargain bin. So this is two bucks. It's a white metal. Um, it's a white metal pendant with the little purple stones. There's no value to this. I do think there might be some silver in the chain though. You can kind of tell this chain has somewhat tarnished compared to the pendant and they've been on this, they've been together for a long time. So you've got, and yes, I agree with Jeffrey. It's like very Titanic-y, you know, heart of the ocean type thing. It's, I think it's kind of, it's a little bit blingy. I mean, I think my daughter wore this when she was probably like 12. So, you know, when people did dress up, but the chain might actually have some value. I took a loop to it to try and see at the top. I don't show that it's Mark Sterling and I don't really know that much about silver. So I'm just making a, a wild guess that because, and I don't know if you can sell it in the picture, but you can see it's a slightly darker silver than the fake silver of the pendant. So it's two bucks, you know, like it's a great gift or just something for yourself. Uh, for $2, it's number two, 
two, eight. So you get the little purple pendant for two, two, eight. And then the last item out of the bargain bin is an ice bucket. This was also put on my Instagram under the dents and dings. There's no dents or dings to the bucket, but there's a little bit of discoloration from some oxidation that um, I'm not sure will clean off because I didn't want to ruin the finish. See, there's a little bit more, there's a little bit of rust on the bottom. So I figure the crystals though, this, the crystal handles are an absolutely perfect shape. There's no chips, no cracks. They are, these are perfect. So the discoloration is only on the very bottom and on the inside, but it's an ice bucket. So, you know, it is functional. Maybe you can polish that if you've got the right, right type of cleaner. I didn't, and as a result, I'm selling it for far less than it's worth. So I'm selling it for two bucks for two, three, three. Two bucks for the crystal, well, glass handled um, ice cream, or ice cream, where I, yeah, that's where my mind is, uh, ice bucket. All righty, so that is everything out of the bargain bin, except for one piece that's, well, I'll include it, um, but we're gonna sell this one for a dollar because as I was pulling it out, I realized there was a piece of damage to it. It's a Jack Daniels uh, shot glass. I think it'd be actually a hard shot glass to drink out of, but it says drink smart on the back. But what I realized as I was pulling it out, there's a little nick on the top right there on the rim. You can kind of see it. So this would end up getting donated to Goodwill. Um, you know, so for a buck, you know, if anybody wants it, you can have it for one dollar. Remember that it's one instead of two. And that was number two, three, nine. So this is the Jim Beam maple. And maybe if you've got like an orange nail polish or something, or even a black, you could kind of touch that off. But fair disclosure, you is you're you're getting it for a buck because there is some damage to it. So anyway, that is the, my bin is now empty. So hallelujah. So appreciate everybody again. Um my name is Patrick, trusty huckster mercantile. If you claimed anything this evening, please go ahead and send me an email to trusty huckster mercantile at gmail.com. I will try and get everything packed up. All the prices tonight were not including shipping. So I will, if you bought more than one item, I will actually pack, pack it up and calculate your real shipping. So you'll get a good deal with everything packaged together. I'll try and get invoices out by this weekend. And then if you could turn around and pay them within a reasonable amount of time, I would really appreciate it. Uh, going back to the a calendar that Michael had made uh, from Instagram, if you if you're we've still got 38 people that are joining the sale, remember that uh, tonight I was I guess I was pride of place for the only sale tonight. Tomorrow there are well there's three listed. Thrifting Adventures is actually going to be on Monday the 18th. So she is not tomorrow night, but tomorrow night we've got Chapter Two Vintage is at one o'clock in the afternoon, uh, east so one o'clock Eastern. And Real Nifty Vintage, Jeffrey, is going to have his sale at 7 o'clock. And I'm sorry, Jeffrey, did he answer whether that was 7 o'clock Central or central. 7? So it's 7 o'clock Central. It says Eastern, but 7 o'clock Central. So Jeffrey sales tomorrow night. Saturday, Reclaim Treasures by Mary. If I'm not mistaken, that is her first sale. So uh, 1 o'clock Eastern for Reclaim Treasures by Mary. Vintage Vinny, this will be his maybe fourth sale. Uh, coming up this Saturday, he's at five o'clock Eastern. He's got some great stuff. I picked up a couple of items uh, and then screwed up and sent my email address. Sent my, sent the email to the wrong address. Um, but so he's got some great stuff. Check out his. And then I believe a Vision Vintage. I don't think she signed on because I had a, I had something to set to the side for her too. Um, a Vision Vintage is doing, I believe, her first sale, uh, one o'clock Eastern on Sunday. So again, anyone who purchased tonight, you'll get a $10 gift, gift certificate from me for my Etsy store. I'll give you all the details when I send it. You will get that after you pay your bill. Not that I'm going to accuse anybody of anything, but I've only had one previous sale and already have learned my lesson that I need to make sure people pay. So um, really appreciate your time. I kind of ran long. Ooh, ran really long, 8.37. Okay, I was trying to keep it to an hour and a half. If you watch anything I do, you know I don't, I'm not short-winded on anything, but appreciate y'all being here. Hope you all enjoyed it. And um, the uh, you know, Michael Todd is the one who did the calendar and he's apologizing for putting the wrong date for thrifting adventures. There's no apologies. This is so nice that Michael Todd did this um, because he's not a reseller. He's not on this list. He did this completely out of the, the goodness of his heart. So I think that's awesome that, you know, we're trying, this community works great together. So if you can make it to some of the other sales, uh, that would be fantastic. And watch the chat because every once in a while we will um, pop in and do, you know, all of us tend to join each other's sales. And as these become more popular, it's harder and harder to track. So definitely keep your eyes open. 
If you haven't subscribed to my channel, you can not only subscribe, but for any channel, once you subscribe right next to it, to the right, there's a little bell icon. I never used to click that. I'm like, I don't need to be announced. What's, who cares? I'm not that crass, but uh, you know, it, why would I need announcements? I, suddenly these are extremely important. You need to put them because I know at one point, um, both Misty at Thrifter Junker Vintage Hunter, her sales are awesome. She went live just like spontaneously one time. Um, Stephanie at Thrifting Adventures, like, oh, go live. You you suddenly have opportunities to catch people. If you don't get the notifications, you don't know they're happening. So consider signing up. So consider subscribing to any channel that you might be interested in, including my own. I appreciate it. Sign up for notifications should you choose to do so. I'm also found on Facebook and Instagram, uh, and I have my store on Etsy. You can find me in all those places under TH Mercantile, short for Trusty Huckster Mercantile. I will be having some more videos. Um, I've created a series of unboxing videos. Uh, the last one, I will just give, for those who watched my last video, there's an interesting side a postscript. If you watch that video, a little bit of a spoiler, um, basically the package was shipped to me and everything was in beautiful condition until I discovered everything smelled like cat urine and it was permeating my home. Um, the person who sold me and shipped me that box contacted me because she watched my video. Okay, I will say I was slightly horrified, but truth hurts. You know, it's it, she was very kind about it. And just so you know, because I don't want to give the impression if you're new to my channel, I don't I don't play that game. I didn't name her in the video. When I do those unboxings, if they do a really good job, I absolutely will give them full credit. But if they don't, that's not why I'm here. I'm not trying to punk somebody. I'm not trying to shame anybody. And I'm not trying to say I'm an expert. But so in her case, I didn't name her shop. I, you know, so she loses the opportunity for advertising. But anyway, I've got two more of those coming up, including the one that it shows why I didn't, I only have three to my set of four bulls. Um, so watch for those videos and then watch all the other people that are popping up in the chat. This is a fun community. I've already talked to talk to Misty. We might be doing some, uh, maybe a fun collaboration um, possibility of doing a sale through like a multi-group sale. So watch uh, all of our channels, subscribe to all of our channels. And I really appreciate you giving your, giving me your time this evening. So again, this is Patrick with Trusty Huckster Mercantile. Thank you so much and have a good night. Bye-bye.